Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevins Welder. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 12 has uh, an interesting statement in it. You also find it in Proverbs chapter 22 verse 3 and it, it strikes me every time I read it uh, that there must be something that you and I should be doing about what we read here. But when you read it and then apply it like we're going to do today, you find that that um, it has some very specific application for sure, but I think it might be misapplied today by some. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. All right, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Now I've often wondered, you know, how can we apply this verse to our lives? You know, there are some Christians these days who are preparing for the worst by storing food and buying up precious metals like gold and silver, uh, by stocking guns and ammunition and preparing supplies by which they can survive off the, off the grid. You know, and so I, I uh, wonder about whether or not there's some prudence in what they're doing. Well, we're going to look at the scriptures today, and we're going to consider what the scriptures have to say and see what they say about hiding in these last days. And I want you to understand something. Today, when we're doing this, we're not talking about emergency supplies for an emergency. You live on the coast like we do, or you live near a forest like some do, and you live in a windy area where there's tornadoes, an area where there's earthquakes, or, and so forth, you're going to face potentially an emergency in your lifetime. And, and having emergency supplies to deal with that emergency is prudent. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the hunker downers, I call them, the hunker downers. In order to, to check this out, we need to, or what they're doing out, we need to go through the Bible and see some instances of prudent men foreseeing evil and hiding, okay? And probably the most notable uh, case of being prudent and hiding is Matthew chapter 24. During the tribulation, the Jews will have to hide from the Antichrist. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15, the Bible says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay, that hasn't happened yet. All right, but it will. During the tribulation, the abomination of desolation will be standing in the holy place in the middle of the tribulation. Verse 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. So you got a situation here then when this abomination of desolation comes. There are men that have to flee. And he says if when the people in Judea have to flee into the mountains. And a person that might be on his housetop can't even stop to get anything out of his house. A man in the field cannot return back to get his clothes. When it happens, he has to leave. He can't even spare five minutes to gather anything out of his home. They are, as Luke chapter 17, verse 30 and 31, uh, 30, 31 and 32 say, they are to remember Lot's wife. Remember, she just looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. I mean, in other words, it is time to go. It is time to go. Okay? 
Now, these Jews that hide from the Antichrist during the tribulation flee, the Bible says, flee into the mountains. They flee to the wilderness because that's where God has prepared a place for them to hide and where he feeds them. Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12, verses 6 and 14. Revelation chapter 12, verse 6 and 14. The woman in Revelation chapter 12, in, in verse 1, is Israel. And during the tribulation, she flees into the wilderness, verse 6, where she hath a place, a hiding place, a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Those are 30 day months. So that's 42 months or three and a half years. That that bad part of the tribulation. All right. Verse 14 to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time. That's a year and times. That's two more years and half a time. So three and a half years from the face of the serpent. Now notice she's in the wilderness. She has her place, a hiding place. And there God feeds her, okay, in the wilderness. What he feeds her is the hidden manna of Revelation 2, verse 17. One of the churches here is said to, to be rewarded if they, if they repent, according to what is written to the angel of the church in Pergamos. And in verse 17, he that hath an ear, Revelation 2, 17, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Okay? And some other things. I give him a white stone and in the stone a new name. But uh, this, this manna by which they are being fed during the tribulation is spoken of in Micah chapter 7. I know we're spending a little time on it, but it's to help us to clarify what really goes on in these times of trouble. All right, Micah chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead. Watch it. As in the days of old, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, will I show unto him marvelous things. Well, in the days when he came out of the land of Egypt, God fed him with manna in the wilderness. And now he's going to feed the flock of his heritage that dwell in, dwell solitarily in the wood. Again, like he did back there in Egypt. And the Bible says he's going to do that with manna. That's their food. So thus we see in Matthew chapter 24 that running away from the danger is the only hope the Jews have when the Antichrist raises up the abomination of desolation. If they hunker down, they die. They got to get out of there. They can't even look back. They can't get their clothes. They can't get anything out of the houses. They have to remember Lot's wife. They can't even look back. Okay. Another instance of hiding in the Bible. We're talking about a prudent man that foresees the evil and hides himself. All right. Another, another case of hiding in the Bible is in 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. In 1 Kings chapter 18, we read about a fellow named Obadiah, and he is Ahab's governor. And he, he hides 100 prophets of the Lord from Jezebel. All right, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 3, Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now, Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by 50 in a cave and fed them with bread and water. All right. So these prophets that are hiding were hiding. Uh, Obadiah was the one that helped set them up in the cave. And the Lord took care of these prophets by providing sustenance for them while they were hiding. They got bread and they got water. God used Obadiah the governor of Ahab's house to feed them. So as I say, it's an inside job going, under, going on under the noses of the king and queen. They don't even realize that Obadiah is taking care of these men. Jezebel wants to kill them. So he's risking his own life. He's risking his own life to keep these men alive. Okay. So 
here's another instance then of some people hiding, prudent men foreseeing the evil and hiding. But in this case, they are hidden by a fellow named Obadiah and they're fed by a fellow named Obadiah and God's using Obadiah to take care of them. Another case of hiding is Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 10, Obadiah and Elijah meet up and Elijah wants Obadiah to go tell Ahab that Elijah wants to see him. And Obadiah replies, and he says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 10, As the Lord thy God liveth. Now listen. There is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. Obadiah is saying, there's no nation or kingdom where he's not sent, Ahab has not sent some people to try to find you. And when they said he is not he there, Ahab, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. In other words, their lives were in danger if they knew where Elijah was and didn't tell them. So Ahab was very thorough in his search for Elijah, but never found him. All right, while Elijah was hiding, first of all, God used ravens to feed him by the brook Kirith. And then God used a widow woman of Zarephath who didn't even have enough oil and meal to feed herself and her son. And she was the one that fed him. And they never did find him. He was up there near Tyre and Sidon. They never did find him. Not until he showed up right here at the end of the drought nearly. So it's an amazing thing. That was a three and a half year hideout. Now notice in all of these cases, very, very important. We're talking about a prudent man that foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. And the question is, what can we learn or apply about that in our lives today? Well, in all of these cases, the Jews hiding from the Antichrist during the tribulation, Obadiah hiding the hundred prophets from Jezebel, and Elijah hiding from Ahab during the drought. In all of these cases, the people who survive have to leave. They, they, don't, they don't get to stay. They have to leave, and they have to go into hiding. And the Lord has to feed them miraculously, either by himself, like he did with the manna, or will do with the manna for the Jews, or like he did for Elijah with the uh, ever-sustaining meal and oil of the widow or by the ravens, all right? So either God fed him by himself or by means of another individual like Obadiah who could provide for them. And in each of these cases, they do not make preparations in their own hideouts, Oh, when the, when the trouble comes, it's time for them to leave. They leave, they hide, and God takes care of them. Well, people say, yeah, but concerning hunkering down, well, what about Joseph? I mean, there was a drought that came. He knew it was coming seven years ahead of time. He foresaw the evil, and, and, and he hid. Well, he didn't hide, okay? Joseph didn't hide. You know what he did? He publicly began to store up the excess, because they had seven years of plenty, he began to, high, uh, to uh, store up the, the, the excess, 20% of it, and put it in store houses and, and in the cities until um, really they had more than they could handle, and then he put it in other places. And in the case of Joseph in Egypt, anyway, it's the government that stored up the food. And in the case of Joseph in Egypt, it was the government that dispersed the food. And it was the government that bought up all the cattle, the land, and the people when they sold the food and then relocated the city, citizens into cities. You understand? Joseph is not an illustration for the hunker downers. Now listen, realistically, listen, you got to think about this. If you were going to make preparations to hide in this information age, here are the things you would need to quit right now. Right now. Okay, you, you would have to quit social networking. That's, that right there is an addiction. You'd have to go to therapy just to be able to stop that. You'd have to quit social networking. You'd have to quit using a cell phone. And I'll tell you what, they, they've got these cell phones that are so slick now. You can listen to audio books. You can listen to white noise at night when you sleep. You can set your alarm. You can set your calendar for years to come with alerts to remind you. You can put all the birthdays of all the people you know with little reminders in there. And you even know what, you, you know, you put the year that they were born and it'll even tell you what birthday it is this particular year. You put all that in there. 
You can put uh, your Bible in there and listen to it. You can listen to Alexander Scorby, for instance, reading back your Bible to you. You can put a, a Bible program in there so that you can use it like a concordance. You, you can put, uh, well, you know, you've got a cell phone. You tell me. You know more about them than I do. You know, and, and I'll tell you what, I mean, you're looking for a hotel. You just go to one of your little hotels.com or your TripAdvisor or whatever you use, and it tells you where it is and what it is and how to get there. You use your GPS and all that stuff in there. You sure you want to quit using that? Because if you're going to prepare yourself to hide, you're going to have to quit using a cell phone. You're going to have to quit using a computer, your email, your your you know online backup and all that stuff you got to quit using all that you have to quit staying in hotels because you got to sign the register let them know who you are and where you are and show them your id you got to quit flying in planes because they they know where you're going and they know when you got there and you know you got to quit renting cars you got to quit using credit cards because that all those purchasers are stored and all that information about where you are and where you've been where you're going what you're buying and all that's in there now i'm not worried about people knowing that because i'm not buying anything that i'm not supposed to have okay but but i'm just telling you i'm you know it doesn't have to be illegitimate stuff i'm just telling you if you use a credit card they know where you were last and what you did you got to quit borrowing money because you got to give all your personal information there you got to quit receiving wages by check and direct deposit got to quit using a bank got to quit driving on troll toll roads yeah, because they take a picture of the license plate and the VIN number, they know right where you are. Send you a bill to the house. You got to quit using OnStar, so you lock like your keys in your car, tough apples. You got to quit using electricity. You got to quit using public utilities and all that other stuff. Listen, if you're going to hide in this information age, you 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 know what you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to quit all that stuff. Listen, have you ever thought that? In our society, if they say one thing, they mean another. You know that double speak and all, all that stuff we've talked about. You use credit cards, you use online services, and you use a cell phone and so forth. And every time you get an update to your iPhone or whatever kind of phone you use, whatever, there's a privacy statement, and you have to agree to the terms. Anytime you get new software, there's a privacy statement. You have to agree to the terms. You use a credit card, there's a privacy statement. You have to agree to the terms. Listen. That's called a privacy statement. Have you ever noticed there are a lot of things in there that aren't private and you don't have the option to opt out of those things? It's not a privacy statement. You know what it is? It's an alert to how it's not private. They call it a privacy statement, but it's the exact opposite. It's a disclosure of how much they know and how much they can use, or whoever they is. And I'm not worried about all that Big Brother stuff. So a lot of people are. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. You've gotten used to thinking in terms of it being a privacy statement, and it's not. It is a disclosure about how much they know and how much they use of what they know. So, so you cannot hide unless you quit using all those things, and then you move to some place like Idaho or somewhere like that. And even then, you're going to be easy to find. You know why? Because that's where the people who want to hide are already moving. <laughs> You, in other words, you won't be the first one that showed up there. There's a whole community of people in northern Idaho right now that are hunkering down, getting ready. And, and you, you're going to get up there because you say, that's the place they say that we need to go. I read that on an Internet site somewhere, you know, and think i got to sell all my stuff and get all this and convert it all to some kind of something I can barter with, and I'm going to move to Idaho. Well, you and a bunch of other people, you know, and... Uh, and so you're not hiding because you, it's like hide and seek. And you get to the place and you open the door and your little brother's in there and he says, you can't hide here. I'm already here. And then you got to go find another place before the count is down. <laughs> Listen, if you want to if you want to hunker down. You, you, here's the main challenge that you face. You must maintain and protect your treasure. But the truth of the matter is you can't. You must maintain and protect your treasure, but you can't. James chapter 5, verse 3. Let's go over there and look. James chapter 5, verse 3. You say, before we end this message, are you going to have some solution for the prudent man who foresees the evil and hides himself? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Don't worry about that. But I'm just showing you that the typical thinking is flawed. The typical thinking about hunkering down is flawed for several reasons. But here's the main one. You've got to maintain and protect your treasure. James chapter 5, verse 3 says, Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. 
you have heaped up treasure together for the last days. You know what the Lord's saying there? You store that stuff, and now you go in the dig it up out of the ground, pull it out of the canister that you've uh, stored it in, and somehow another gold and silver which don't rust and which don't canker have suddenly rusted and cankered. You say, how is that? Because God does that. It is a miraculous event. You're like Now it's worthless. Not only that, not only that, Matthew chapter 6, we're talking about the prudent that foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Can he do it by hunkering down? That's the question. Can he do it by hunkering down? The answer is no. The reason is he can't protect his treasure and he can't maintain it. It, it rusts, it cankers. Matthew six nineteen, he says, in, uh, in, in talking about your treasure, he says this, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Why? Where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Don't think for a moment that you'll be able to protect yourself from the hungry mobs and the informants when it comes time to survive. When they get hungry enough to eat their own children, you say, they're not going to eat their own children. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. I'm going to show you one verse. They're all over the Bible, but I'll show you one. There at least, there's at least 10 of them, but I'll give you one. Leviticus chapter 26 and Deuteronomy chapter 28 both talk about events, you know, in the last days and tribulation and so forth. Leviticus 26, verse 29, he's talking to the Jews here, but he says, when, when those times get bad, he says this, Leviticus 26, 29, ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. Now, that's disgusting, you know, but in the siege of Samaria in 2 Kings, that's exactly what those women did in 2 Kings chapter 6. They boiled one boy and ate him, and the next day they were supposed to boil the other boy and eat him, and that's when the women cried out to the king. Now listen, they're going to get that hungry. Cannibalism is going to be a one of the only ways people will be able to survive. Now don't think for a minute that the thieves are going to leave you alone just because you happen to have a few guns and some bullets and some way to protect yourself in your house. When they find out that you've got food, they will risk their own lives, and there'll be enough of them. You can't take them all out. They're going to come and get that food, and they're going to come and get you. They'll kill you if they have to in order to get your food and your money. But you know what Ezekiel chapter 7 says? One more thing about this hunkering down with your treasure. You've got to maintain it and protect it if you're a prudent man that's going to hide yourself from the evil by hunkering down. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 19 says this, They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. Why? They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. You say, well, I'll use my gold and silver to buy and sell. The Bible tells you in, Math in Revelation 13, you can't buy or sell unless you've got the mark of the beast. You start using some sort of a barter system with gold and silver, the people who do it get caught and die. And so what do they have? Informants. And pretty soon then you're left with your gold and silver and no food because nobody will trade with you. And you can't satisfy your soul and fill your bowels with gold and silver. You can't eat it. Proverbs says in 11.4, Proverbs 11.4 says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath. So, so the question then is, is it viable for us to look at Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12, the prudent for, man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, and think that is a verse that justifies hunkering down in anticipation of bad times to come in the last days. And I say, for a Christian, for a Christian, based on what you've seen here, no. No. Because you can't maintain and protect your treasure, which you'd have to do, You'd have to remove yourself from circulation in the information age right now and all the things you have to do, you're not going to do. It's too inconvenient. You can't use Joseph as uh, an illustration because it's not even pertinent. And all the other people who ever hid themselves who were prudent, prudent God had to feed or use somebody else miraculous to feed them. So what are you to do? Number one, what are you to do? How can you be a prudent man and prepare for a coming evil Number one, trust God. That's what the Bible says over and 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 again. If you read it all, it just keeps saying the same thing. Trust God. Proverbs chapter three, 
verses 6 and 7, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust the Lord. Trust God. Second thing, give. You say, that's crazy. If I give it away, then how am I going to have it? It's God's economy. Listen, if you read in the Bible, the people that God takes care of in the Bible are the givers. That's right. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. I'm not finished. Keep reading. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God, and God, listen, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I believe those three verses. God loveth the cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I say the best way to prepare for a coming calamity is to give. I'll tell you another one. Pray. Absolutely. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, the Bible says. James chapter 1, verse 5. That's what it is. Pray. Pray. Constantly seeking God and God's wisdom and God's assurance about what to do. That's a prudent man. And when you pray, pray understanding that the Lord said, Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I believe that. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. I believe that. And then here's the last thing to do. What are you to do as a prudent man for seeing the evil? If you're going to hide yourself, hide yourself in Jesus Christ. Hide yourself in Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can take care of you. And when you do, keep looking for Jesus. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the way to prepare as a prudent man, for the day of evil. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-241. 6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Hallelujah.